Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb left for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken by her, by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So this is a letter from our bishop, Bishop Jim Gonya, out of the Rocky Mountain Senate. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, Advent is about wandering and homelessness. A very young family is uprooted from their, from their surroundings. <coughs> they are powerless pawns in a much larger global political game in which they have no control. They make a perilous journey to a place where they are unwelcome. Taking refuge in a barn, they carve out the most improbable of places in which a doorway is made for God to come among us. The child born of this miracle will spend a lifetime teaching us about such doorways. He himself becomes the widest door to the surprise of God's grace. The homelessness and rejection which begins before his birth will follow him through his life. He makes his home with outcasts, welcomes sinners to dine with him. He designs his life in such a way that it unmasks all but the greatest human gains by which we victimize and scapegoat others to make ourselves feel safe. The greatest unmasking happens on a cross where he exposes the depth of our violent plots. And when God raises him from the dead, it is the greatest of all doorways of grace. It proves to be nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God. Jesus taught us that we will continue to meet him and discover God's presence among those who seem the least likely candidates to be bearers of the divine. We who have been formed around this radical message of presence and hope are called to live out of this world, transforming principle and to make a welcoming home for those who are so desperately in need of a place of refuge. Syri the Syrian refugee crisis, which has unfolded in this past year, together with the tragic events surrounding the ISIS attack on Paris, Beirut, and other countries, unmask the complexity to our current global reality. Terrorism gives birth to a fear which can kill our capacity for compassion. The Rocky Mountain Senate Council, upon the request of the Senate's global mission commitment, has asked each congregation to declare one Sunday in Advent 2015 as Refugee Sunday. I encourage you, which is today, to pick a Sunday and to use this litany and to share this worship together so that we can make a difference. <coughs> we can continue the miracle of the Holy Family for the transformation of the whole world. Bishop Gonya. 
I want to share with you um, just a couple stories from refugee settlement in Salt Lake City. Ali Al Kamasha. He worked as a senior member in the Ministry Education Building and Arts Program in schools throughout Iraq. In 2001, he received a request from Saddam Hussein to fix a painting. Because Ali disagreed with the regime, he refused. When Hussein's security officers arrived at his house to discuss the issue, Ali decided it was time to leave Iraq. Ali left the next morning with his family. They crossed the border to Jordan, and where Ali continued to work as a professional artist. And then in 2009, Ali and his wife and children resettled as refugees in the United States. Ali calls his paintings expressions of the magnificent world and hard life for women and children. They don't have freedom like in Europe or in America, speaking of Iraqi women. And every time I look at the face of the women, I see how tired she is. She is sad and life is hard. Ali currently lives in Salt Lake City and finds every opportunity to teach art to others. Atem Alou. He fled Sudan when he was eight years old, after militiamen backed by the government invaded his village. He witnessed these men shooting and killing his father and then forcing his mother to drown herself and her youngest child. He along with 27,000 other children became the lost boys of Sudan. Atim and his brothers lived in Ethiopia in a refugee camp for three years when civil war broke out there as well. The children were forced to cross a river where more than half the children died from gunshot wounds, crocodile attacks, or drowning. Sadly, one of Atem's brothers did not make it. In the UN refugee camp, Ali began to do something extraordinary. He painted representative figures. While most artists in the area were painting decorative designs, his paintings helped tell his painful story. In 2001, he resettled in the United States as a refugee. He has since graduated from BYU, taught art and Dinka at Harvard University, and advocated for the independence of South Sudan. He currently lives in Salt Lake City with his wife and children. So you think not that all refugees are just a bunch of unknown people who perhaps don't make a difference in your life. But let me share this with you. Gene Simmons, a member of KISS, his mother was a Holocaust survivor. Oscar Stratus, Austrian Jewish composer and refugee. Jackie Chan, he fled to the United States from Hong Kong after being threatened with death by the triads. And the beautiful actress Marlene Dietrich was a refugee <coughs> from Nazi Germany. Madeleine Albright, our first sec female Secretary of State, fa her family fled from Czechoslovakia in 1938. Albert Einstein, German-born theoretical psychiatrist, he never returned to Germany once he heard that Hitler had come to power. And Claude Levi Strauss, a French Jewish philosopher, an anthropologist, was also a refugee from France. These people have made a difference in our lives, and we know of them and about their works.
for the least what their family has done for this country. At least we think that refugees are somebody that is unknown to us. We are wrong. And on this day, let us remember all of those who perhaps were even your family, came to this country as unknown, scared and frightened, with little in their pocket, and perhaps unwelcome. On this day, let us remember all of God's brothers, all God's brothers, sons and daughters. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, whose son became a refugee and had no place to call his own. Look with mercy on those who today are fleeing from danger, homelessness, and hunger. Bless those who work to bring them relief. Inspire generosity and compassion in all our hearts. And guide the nations of the world towards that day when all will rejoice in your kingdom of justice and of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and this family of God says, Amen.